Let's talk about the rock cycle. Our very first rock type we're going to look at is called an igneous rock. Before we look at any of them to see their characteristics, we're going to first talk about how are they formed. So if you take a look down here, I have my nice little volcano, but I'm missing something. What comes up through the volcano? Well, we're going to have some magma coming up and lava falling down the sides. Now, lava does not stay lava forever. It will eventually cool down. So that's actually how we get our igneous rock, through the lava over here or even the magma because sometimes igneous rock can be formed inside of the earth. But we're either going to have our magma or our lava cool down. So it might look, if I'm doing it as a drawing, something like this starts hardening. Maybe I'll use a thicker pen. There we go, it's hardening. It might be black, it could be different colors, it can be more than one color too. And then eventually, due to weathering, those this big chunk here is gonna break off into some smaller rocks. And that's how we're gonna get our igneous rocks. Now that we know how igneous rocks are formed through cooling of magma or lava, let's take a look at a few examples. So here's a few different types of igneous rock. I can see they are a little different, but there's some characteristics that they have in common. For one, they all came from magma and lava cooling down, whether it was inside the earth or outside the earth. Another characteristic they all have is they have no fossils in them. They're too hot, they would have melted any of the remains we need to create a fossil. So you will not find fossils inside of an igneous rock. If you also look closely, they have little crystals inside. Now this one cooled very quickly, so it became one crystal. While in other igneous rocks, they tend to cool at different speeds, and that's what's gonna get you different colors and making it look all spotty instead. And here again is another example of an igneous rock. Now this one has a lot more pores in it and different holes inside of them. So there are a few ways that they are different, but they also have things that are in common. One of the most common things you will see is that they're a little different and they have the pores in them. This is not one you see quite as often. So remember, igneous rock, cooling of magma and lava equals no fossils, and they're gonna have randomly arranged crystals throughout them. So on to our next rock, the sedimentary rock. Of course, we first have to answer our question, how do these rocks form? So this graphic here does a great job describing what's going on to get our sedimentary rock. So first, we have eroded sediments end up in water and begin to settle. So we have little bits of rocks you can see that are settling to the bottom of the water. Then over time, we're gonna get more and more and we're getting these layers in here. As they pile up more and press down on each other, we get compaction happening. We continue with the layers, there's getting more and more, till eventually we have so many that there's so much pressure that they've actually glued themselves together to become a rock. So when we are looking at sedimentary rock, they are created through layers of dirt and sediment building up over time. There's a lot of pressure. They're really pounding into each other and then hardening. Our big fancy words though for it, because we know we can never settle with a easy explanation. We have to use fancy science words is compaction and sedimentation. So these two words are going to summarize what's going on. Now that we've looked at how are they created, let's take a look at a few examples. So here are a few examples of sedimentary rocks. As you can see, there's some things these rocks have in common. So first of all, they can contain fossils. If you look at this one right here, we have imprints of fossils. Because think about it, the rocks are pressing on each other and then animals and leaves and insects are dying, so they're getting caught in that layer and being pressed down, which can help us create a fossil. So then we can actually learn what happened during a time period based on how far down that rock is. Our rocks are also pretty grainy looking between the three of them. There's no crystals inside of these rocks. And they're not as interesting colors. They're kind of on the more dull side because we're using other rocks that have broken down so you can see like sand and grains all intermixed inside of them. 
All right, time for our last rock, the metamorphic rock. So of course, before we can look at any examples, we have to figure out how are these rocks formed. So let's take a look at this image to help us better understand. Before we look at any of the labels, look at these layers. Right here, we could have sedimentary rock or igneous rock mixed in. Now this rock is going to change into metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock can change from any other rock. It just takes two things. We're gonna take high heat, so our magma down here is pushing up through the layers and heating them up. And then we're gonna take pressure from below or from above. The pressure could be the magma pushing up or it could be the different layers pushing down on each other. But that intense pressure and heat is eventually going to change the rock to become metamorphic. So we just say high heat and pressure. So here's a few examples of metamorphic rocks. What do you notice that they have in common? Well, some of their characteristics are that they all have crystals, so they're gonna look a little bit shinier than our sedimentary rocks. They also have layers. So if they had crystals before, they've now pushed them to form layers rather than scattered crystals throughout. So that's one of the things our pressure is doing and it's that heat can melt it down to make it all work together and get into our layers. Also, one thing that's special about metamorphic is it can be formed from either one of the other two rocks. So it must take one of those two rocks and add the heat and pressure to become its own. So now you've learned the rock cycle. Here's another image of the rock cycle. It's really a cycle because it's never ending. These different pieces can break down, they can be heated, melted, they can be melted back down to magma and come back up as igneous. So it's never ending. So it's a cycle, but for rocks.